The early hours of the 1st of June, 2009. Air France Flight 447 from Rio de Janeiro to Paris makes its final radio transmission. Then, all contact is lost. Flight 447 has vanished into thin air. We can only pray and hope. At the moment, we knew nothing. Aviation experts are baffled. Why would a well-operated aircraft with a well-trained crew suddenly disappear? The thing that we know is that we don't know. The missing aircraft is a state-of-the-art Airbus A330. It has never suffered a single passenger fatality. The big question, of course, is where is the aircraft? Five days later, the shattered wreckage is finally discovered floating in the Atlantic. 228 passengers and crew are dead. No one has given a full explanation as to what happened. Until now. One year after Flight 447 was lost, a 28 million euro Atlantic search operation has failed to recover the all-important black boxes. The missing flight data in cockpit voice recorders would provide the only definitive proof of the aircraft's fate. These have not been found yet. They're clearly on the bottom with the rest of the wreckage. A very, very big handicap to the investigation. The official French investigation is not prepared to make its final report until the black boxes are found. Two interim reports set out a tantalizing array of known facts, but are unwilling to draw specific conclusions. With nearly 700 A330s in service worldwide, passenger safety experts are impatient for answers. We move basically the population of the planet every three years. We just can't accept unknowns any longer. This film brings together an independent team of leading air crash investigators. Their combined expertise will provide the first credible solution to the mystery of Flight 447. With their own tests and simulations, they plan to piece together a convincing accident scenario from the few clues scattered in the official reports. Veteran crash investigator Tony Cable will build a case from just a few fragments of evidence. Any accident is a chain of events and each of the links needs to be in place. He will be joined by an aviation meteorologist. We really are limited to using mostly satellite data to understand what's going on. And a highly respected structural engineer. You're going to be forced to just look at whatever recovered pieces of the structure that you have. Completing the team, three expert pilots specializing in aviation safety. It's very unlikely that one single thing would bring down an aircraft. There's a, an unfortunate alignment of many things that, that caused a problem. As you piece it together, the weight and significance of each piece of that evidence becomes more and more clear. And that's how you develop the theory that leads to the truth. The investigation team faces a daunting challenge. The lost aircraft left hardly a trace behind. Tony Cable is a veteran of 32 years in the UK Air Accidents Investigation Branch. He was a senior investigator on the Concorde crash and the Lockerbie bombing. As he kick-starts our independent investigation, he knows physical evidence is limited. 
The normal way of investigating an accident, of course, is to look at the crash site and the wreckage. In this case, it's likely there's only um, a small amount of floating wreckage. Five days after it disappeared, the first wreckage from Flight 447 was found, floating 750 miles off the coast of Brazil. But most of the aircraft had sunk two and a half miles down to the ocean floor. Tony Cable's task to somehow make sense of the few fragments that were recovered. It is possible, if you know the wreckage, to work out quite a lot about uh, how it crashed, whether it broke up in the air. The first thing to eliminate, the possibility of a terrorist attack. The possibilities uh, that immediately come to mind would be a bomb or a structural breakup. In the hunt for evidence of a mid-air explosion and breakup, Cable is joined by one of the world's leading aviation safety consultants. For John Cox, the key technique is reconstruction. Dealing with wreckage is literally a jigsaw puzzle, but you don't know how many pieces you have and you usually don't have all of them. Are both wings attached to the airplane? Is the nose there? Is the tail there? The quote, four corners. You have to take what wreckage you have and reassemble it so that you can then begin to, to understand the forces that were actually on the airplane at impact in its last moments of flight. A similar jigsaw puzzle was solved in this way when TWA Flight 800 crashed off the coast of New York in 1996. The aircraft broke apart in mid-air, then large fragments of fuselage floated slowly down to the water without further major damage. The National Transportation Safety Board were able to conclude that a fuel explosion due to faulty wiring was the cause. Engineer Jim Wildy was chief of the investigation's materials lab. But with Flight 447, he faces a jigsaw with most of the pieces missing. In this case, there's only a limited amount of structure that's recovered. It fortunately does tell enough of a story to at least give a clue as to what's going on with the airplane. Two of Flight 447's four corners were recovered. Wildy turns first to the nose cone. If this piece was to come off the airplane and float to the uh, water by itself, uh, it wouldn't be going fast enough so that when it hit the water, it would be damned really in any way. Instead, the nose cone shows signs of a high-speed impact with the water. What we see here is that this piece has been flattened, it's been crushed, it's been torn, and so this is a very clear sign that this piece was on the airplane when the airplane hit the water. It looks like the nose cone only broke off on impact. The second jigsaw piece, the tail fin, tells the same story. The official report suggests a mid-air breakup could not have wrenched it from the fuselage like this. Only a massive impact when the aircraft hit the ocean would have sufficient force. Nose cone and tail fin suggest Flight 447 stayed intact until it hit the water. The last piece of the puzzle, a floor section from the cargo compartment, can even tell Wildy which way the aircraft was pointing as it fell. And what we see here is, is curvature damage on both sides of this piece with a fracture down the middle. And this damage is consistent with the airplane hitting relatively flat and with very high hydraulic pressure coming up from below and deforming this piece in the, in the manner that's shown here. Flight 447 hit the water intact and level. Whatever the cause of the accident is, it better take into account the fact that this airplane is hitting the water relatively flat at a high rate of speed. The first solid conclusion. Flight 447 didn't explode in mid-air. It simply fell out of the sky. But if there was no explosion, then what did happen? 
The investigators turn their attention to the safety of the aircraft itself. The A330 is a jewel in the crown of European aerospace giant Airbus. With nearly 700 in service, there had never been a single passenger fatality before Flight 447. This history of reliability rests on a highly computerized flight control system, fly-by-wire. The design philosophy that safety is greatly enhanced by automation. They're highly automated, they're fly-by-wire, they're some of the leading-edge technology in aviation uh, even today. If the pilot were to lose control for some reason, the fly-by-wire system would save the airplane. V1, rotate. Captain Martin Alder is a former chairman of the British Airline Pilots Flight Safety Group. Gear up. And a highly experienced Airbus instructor. In the flight simulator, he shows how automation can keep an aircraft under control, even with no help at all from the pilot. In a conventional airplane, Instead of this side stick, I'd have quite a big control column here. You need plenty of leverage to apply the mechanical forces you need to move the uh, control surfaces to control the aeroplane. In a conventional aeroplane, the pilot pulls mechanical levers to operate a powered hydraulic control system. But with fly-by-wire, the heavyweight gear is replaced by electronics. Now a flight computer carries out the pilot's wishes. The computer keeps the aircraft under precision control during any maneuver, even a simple turn. So if I want to go to the left, stick to the left. Round to the left. The flight computer adjusts the wing and the aircraft rolls to the left. Ordinarily, this would cause the A330 to descend. So the computer compensates by increasing engine thrust and pitching the nose up to maintain a steady altitude. The end result? Totally automatic control. I take my hands off, and there we are. It's flying round. Vertical speed zero, 25 degrees of bank, 240 knots. It's going to fly round at 25 degrees of bank, keep doing this until we get bored. When autopilot is switched on, the plane literally flies itself. 99% of the time when you're sitting as a passenger flying at 35,000 feet, the autopilot's flying the aeroplane. Flight 447 would have been safely on autopilot as it headed out over the Atlantic. The pilots settling in for the long haul the aircraft making continuous automatic adjustments to keep them on course for Paris. Tony Cable tracks their progress using air traffic control transcripts. The only thing to go on in this case, in the early stage, is uh, to look at the last position report, uh, which in this case is the last crew conversation with air traffic control. Three hours out from Rio de Janeiro, Flight 447 was still on the intended flight path. Air France 447, by checking Intel 0133, level 350, Salpu 01. But at 1.35 a.m., all radio communications ceased. There is nothing to say what's happened to it after that last position report. The last known position, 350 miles off the coast of Brazil. But now, the mystery deepens. For another 35 minutes, Flight 447's computer continues to send out automatic position reports.